Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to hardwire your dash cam to your 2020 Hyundai Palisade. Now if you saw my other video on how to do this on the 2019 Acura RDX, it's basically the same thing. It's just a little bit uh, different in terms of the placement of the fuse in the fuse box. The first thing you're going to need is a hardwiring kit that you can purchase from Amazon. I'll have a link to uh, maybe not this one specifically because this one might not be available any longer, but I have a link to the actual product on the notes for this uh, video. So what it does is it comes with uh, various fuse uh, adapters and there's going to be different sizes depending on what kind of car you have, but obviously for the 2020 Palisade, there'll be a specific one. Uh, I'm not showing you the exact one, but I'm just picking one out as an example. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out the existing fuse in the fuse panel, and I'll show you which one uh, here in a second. And you're gonna take that existing fuse out and put it on the top right there. And then from one of the provided fuses, you're gonna actually plug it in onto the bottom spot as I'm showing you here. So the ones that they provide, you're gonna put that in the bottom, and then on the top, you're gonna put the existing fuse that you'll pull out uh, to put this adapter in. And then you will connect the end connector into the power module box, which has two cables sticking out. One, it connects to here, and then the other one will be a ground wire. And this kit also provides this little uh, handy dandy tool to be able to um, take out your uh, panel from the uh, side panel of the car. And I'll show you that here in a second. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look. The way I did it is I hardwired it. Uh, it's nice because it gets rid of the clutter and it also um, turns on when the engine is started and it turns off automatically when you turn off the engine. So once you start the engine, you'll see this camera here and I'll also link to this camera uh, and I'll show you some footage from what it actually looks like too. But you can see how it turns on automatically when you turn on the car and then I have the wire uh, going all along the top through the A-pillar A -pillar down to the fuse box. And I'll show you how to remove all the pieces here in a second. You can mount it on the left or on the right side. On mine, I mounted on mine on the right side. Wait, wait a minute, did you guys just see that? I think my son did a little cameo here. Let's rewind. Wait for it. Yeah, I don't think that's a real fall. Anyway. So here is the side panel. I went ahead and took off the fuse box. You can see right there a little to the right, but I'm going to use this little tool and I'm going to put it in. There's like a little slot uh, where you can put it in to pry it open and I'll show you here in a second. It's going to be highlighted in red. See that little um, tiny indent? You can go ahead and stick the tool in there, work your way up, um, and then you can basically loosen the side panel. And then once you do that, you can easily take it off. It's held together by a couple of clips. Um, so you can go ahead and take it off pretty easily there. So this is what the fuse panel looks like. And you can see I already have it plugged in here, but I'll go ahead and take it out so I could show you. Once I take it out, you could see it's, I use the 10 amp port right there. It's the, from the bottom right corner, third to the left and two up. And this is the spare amp, 10 amp fuse that I'm using. This is from the instruction manual, circled in red. So like I said, you took out the existing 10 amp fuse, you put it on the top, and that five amp fuse is the one that was provided from the kit. Once I have that there, you basically have to just plug it in. And it's as easy as that in terms of finding out which fuse to use. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the molding so I can go ahead and run the wire up uh, to the area where the dash cam is. Make sure you get the right one. Uh, make sure your camera has either a mini USB or a micro USB. Uh, the, both of the ones that I have are mini USB, so you just want to make sure you get the right one. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the power module box. That's a that little black box right there. One end goes to the mini USB side that plugs into the camera, and then the other one, my thumb is, it has two cords, one that goes into the fuse box, which I connected right there, shown from the earlier video, and then the second wire actually connects to uh, the ground. So you have to figure out a place where there's a metal bolt, and you can see right where, my, where I put mine at. Um, it's easily just, I just loosened up the, uh, the bolt there and connected it there. And then I tucked in the power module box uh, as well as the cores back into there. And I'm running the wire up now to the A-pillar. So you can remove the molding. It's very easy to remove as well as to put back. 
The next part is probably the trickiest part. You can go ahead and loosen the A pillar right here where my hand is, but you can't pull it all the way out because it's held together by a clip. And the only way to loosen the clip is by using some kind of tweezer to be able to pinch it together to take it out. So you gotta be careful not to pull it out too hard to try and forcibly remove it because it'll break the clip. What I did is with the pillar loosened, I tucked it into the top portion, but I was careful to make sure that it wasn't in the way of the airbag because there is an airbag where the A pillar is. So once I did that, I ran the wire up through the top and I connected it to my uh, dash cam here on the right side. The dash cam that I'm using is basically a generic dash cam that I purchased off of Amazon and I'll go ahead and link to it in the video. But um, compared to the Rexing V1 that I use for my Acura RDX, I do prefer the uh, Rexing camera and the reason for that is because this generic one that I'm using here actually records in an AVI format which isn't the most uh, compatible with Mac computers if you're a Mac person. Plus the video quality on the Rexing V1, which I'll also link to in the uh, video notes, it just seems a little bit better uh, in terms of the higher quality. Now you can choose different uh, video quality. You can go 1080 or you can do 720. This one I'm actually using 720 and it's around nine o'clock in the evening. Um, but you can see the quality is not too bad on this one either. But just because of the file format, I actually do prefer the uh, Rexing V1. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope uh, this video was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me uh, any questions on the comments. Um, and yeah, please go ahead and uh, take the next two seconds to hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.